many people did you, and that, this is a question I'm asking both to you, because, you know, how many people did you, did you, did you call up anybody or did you inform anybody, listen, I'm going down, get on my back because I'm going down anyway? Did you? When I was, when I was in the pen. Do you know what I'm talking about, right? Like I, I called up friends of mine yeah. and said, listen, they were already, they already got indicted, but they didn't, they weren't me. They weren't the front page of the Daily News. There were there were no there were nobody's in the case. When I took off on the run, I, before I left, I went to di- I had dinner and I invited there was like eight or nine people, my brokers, and I I told them all I said, look, I'm going on the run. I'm taking off. I'm I'm like if you guys probably if you guys get indicted or get talked to by the FBI, like tell on me. Right. Everybody tell on me. Tell them you didn't know anything. It was me. It was me. Like just just fucking like oh I'm not gonna do right, all yeah. of them. How many guys I'm gonna do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Like, all right, well, Every one of them could sign. An oh, agreement, right? They were, they were driving. They were waiting. In the fucking. <laughs> what I was going to say is, when I'm in the pen, I'm getting phone call after phone call and message after message. This guy's right. That guy's right. And I'm looking at the, you had a the phone in the fucking. You had a fucking smuggle phone. phones. You know, we're yeah, we're in Brazil. Oh, <laughs> I'm waiting. Where the yeah. fuck? There's what prison phone. were you when you had a fucking? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, so some of the guys, you know, we did the movie about Klaus, and you know, we discussed this. What movie? And I, we're doing a series called Nordic Narcos about Klaus's life. Oh, is it out yet? So, uh, it'll be out next month. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> so, helping him promote a little, right? <laughs> Klaus will promote. Yeah. So uh, actually, I'm doing a radio show tomorrow in Denmark, uh, I think four o'clock. So about the show and about murder and things like that. But when these guys are all rolling one after another, I look at my friend, I go, this ain't no surprise. I mean, you know, I've been in the street my whole life. I said, so... Well, the thing is, when you start hearing about the bosses all going against you, and when you hear about the bosses, guys and captains, now you're saying to yourself, <laughs> you got to laugh and say, they're so full of shit, all this tough talk they all got. And they all got an excuse why they're meeting the FBI, why they're sitting down, why they're only giving a little information, why they do. This is nonsense talk. You know as well as I do. All these guys are talking. All of them are either doing it undercover snitches or their informants, or whatever they're doing. So when people think, when I was sitting there and think that they were going to do anything different, I'd be a fool to believe they're not going to talk. So when you talk to these guys, they know what it is. They know where all these guys are talking. They they, they know exactly what it is. So, yeah. you know, so all you saw all the stand-up guys that that the stand-up guys like you went to the meeting with eight guys, right? Yeah. I said, listen, right. I got a problem. I'm leaving. Cover your ass. No. Oh, I'm a gangster. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. They're pen- no. These guys are pen ga- with the pen. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Listen, yeah. nobody's killing each other in the mortgage. In a right. fucking in, Normally. Over mortgage. Yeah. Normally. I mean, yeah. that's not. They're not killing anybody in the mob. Yeah. 40 years ago with yeah. the myth of the mob. You know, yeah. they were all trying to live off for 40 years ago, right. 30 years ago. Yeah. This doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. You had a handful of killings within the mafia in the last 20 years. Handful. Yeah. You know, this it's over. Uh, and with the technology, with the sentence, you can't get away with anything they, today. They, they're making each other in their own. Otherwise, there's one or two we might have. There's one or two we might have hit already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is the name? Uh, uh, oh, God. Joey Marlino, skinny yeah. Joe. Oh, like, yeah, like the Philly he, guy. I was, I was the locked Philly up. Guy. Yeah, I was locked yeah. up with him. How so. is he? Is he a nice guy? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> You I, don't know either. I mean, I, I had l- I had lunch at his table two or three times. He had no like in in Coleman. Right. Um. I like guys are coming up to me like Cox. How much time you got? I'm like I got 26 years. I'm like, but somebody could fuck up and tell me where there's a body. I'll be out of here tomorrow. Right. And they go, Oh, that's how it is. I go, That's exactly how it is. Like yeah. I'm not here to make friends. Right. Like I was no right. qualms. And right. then when I actually got my sentence reduced, and people everybody knew. Oh yeah, it yeah. was ten times as bad. So. <laughs> so Oh, yeah. Marlino's. I, I found out where the body. Yeah, but, yeah, that idiot. Yeah. Oh, I'm <laughs> you idiot. I'm, yeah, I'm not <laughs> shy about it. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm leaving. Yeah. These guys are like, damn, bro. Like, <laughs> yeah, damn, bro. Like, like, they're like, yeah, they're like, shit, man. You ain't. So I guess you ain't the guy to fucking uh, do nothing with. I'm like, bro, you better hope they talk to you before they talk to me. Yeah. I'm telling them in the car on the way there. Yeah, right. and they're like, God <laughs> damn, God. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah that's yeah. how it is. Yeah, and you know, just joking around and you know, walk away and, but. The point is, is that Marlino is having lunch with me on a couple of occasions yeah. and Tommy's there. Right. And Tommy, when we go to sit, like Marlino's coming over to bring his tray. He's like, listen, do not fucking say a thing about cooperation. Do not. If like he doesn't have any clue, he has no. And he sits down and eats with me and I don't fucking say a thing to him. Yeah. Tommy's so flipped fucking out yeah, over yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Like he's like, don't say a fucking thing. If he fucking knew that you did. And he Marlino obviously has an issue uh, with it, but. He also got what he get 
a couple of years. Yeah. You know, fees, uh, um, yeah, I don't know. Two years, I think, right? yeah. 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 But I mean, a gambling beef for something. How long did Tommy get on that? Six months. Oh God. He got, yeah, he got, I think he got like six months and listen, You'd have fought. You'd have fucking thought they gave him ten years. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, no you question. He fucking no question. He bitched and moaned the entire. He fucking <laughs> hustled and bitched and moaned the whole time. I was like, "What are you doing?" He was like, "I fucking believe they gave me this much time. I can't believe it." I'm like, "Are you? You spent more time taking a shit. I, I you spent more I, time taking a shit. I stood in lines longer than you. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? Like, I need to get halfway house. You got to call. Like, he's bribing people. Go talk to the fucking counselor. Go this. Go that. It's like, what are you doing, bro? It's six months. It's a joke. Yeah, yeah. nothing. It's, you're gonna yeah. get halfway house. Calm down. You'll get a few months. I mean, yeah, fuck it's, it. It's he incredible. Fuck. Yeah. But I, honestly, like, he was one of the guys putting money on your books. He always had food. He's always like, you know, I, I, you need anything? I, you know, he did the whole so thing. So he, like, did, he did a lot of bribe work there too. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying he was actually a, a very good, like good to me when well, we were in yeah, prison. I, so he was cool. Yeah, he yeah was it was cool. good to you. Yeah. But I, the I, problem with him is, you know, he's he's so hyper. He has to be doing something all the time. He can't calm down. Oh, uh, okay. He's constantly. He's a little unstable. Yeah, we yeah. found a little bit of his <laughs> instability. I don't want to um, get into yeah. that, you know. But but yeah, yeah, anyway, so you guys had dinner, lunch with, with, with uh, Joey. Little, yeah, well, they ate all, they ate all the time. What do they call him, Skinny Joey? I mean, is that is that his I don't nickname? Think he likes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know, but but they had they had it. Uh, uh, yeah. they had lunch all the time. But I'm saying it's comical because I would go and sit at his table. He fucking just you know, hey, what's uh, how, how are you doing? I, re I, re I remember sitting at the table. I was telling you the other day, we're uh, in in uh, Mariana, no, no, uh, McKeon, and uh, and and a friend of mine, Scott uh, Scott Ogan, comes sits down. And Scott is uh, spatial unawareness. He, he's not aware of spatialness, so he, he would be like eight guys be watching TV, and he put his back to eight guys, you know, and and, and like. And they'd be sitting right here. So they couldn't see the TV in front of them. And, the, you know, everybody in prison is trying to be polite. They don't want to be, hey, dude, move your fucking ass. You know what I'm saying? So uh, oh, they'd be looking around and, like, they'd be going, That's hey. Polite. They'd be going, hey. And all of a sudden, I, I, I see Scott. I come up. I, I, run, I run over and grab Scott. He goes, what? I go, come here, come here. I want to talk to you. He goes, what? I go, can you stand over here? There's eight guys behind you trying to watch the fucking game. And you're standing in front of them. So he sits down at, at lunch with us one day. Uh, and he sat with me quite often. But there's another guy at the table. Who's just straight up convict all his life. This guy's a convict all his life. We're inmates. <laughs> this guy's a convict. He's done state bids. He's done everything in his life. He's, this is his whole life. This is his whole life, right? This is his life. This is what he's done. Scott sits down. Yeah, rah, 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 and he goes, takes up a fucking tissue and blows his nose at the table. The guy gets up and says, you dirty motherfucker. Don't you ever do that in front of me again. I'm like, Scott. What are you, I'm trying to grab him. Don't do that. You know, and it was a hanker. It was, it was a hanker like this big. But I told you the other day, a guy did it in the chow hall, right? I wasn't sitting there. I was at another table. And I didn't know the day before the guy warned him. He passed gas. The next day, or two days, whatever it was, a week, I don't know, because I wasn't at the table. I'm sitting, I missed it. I now, where was this? Where, what prison was this at? It was uh, uh, McKean. McKean? Oh. Yeah. And uh, The dream. What Lee was with me. Lee? So uh, the guy must have passed gas again. The guy just walked up and fucking hit him a shot and beat him all over a chow hall, which is a bad place to beat somebody. Yeah, you don't want to fight a chow hall. Sign a riot. Yeah, and all that. right. But guys don't understand prison. There's, you know, a lot of things. When you, yeah, there's another time I was in Allenwood, and the guy has, you know, they all put their chairs in front for the TV and whatever. The, you know, you know. Yeah. Somebody sat in his spot. So, no, I came in. <laughs> I, I came in and yeah. there was no chair, and I put my chair there. And the guy taps me on the shoulder and he says, you know, I sit here every week. So, you know, you're looking at him now. It's too late now. I'm yeah. There. Yeah. And I says, yeah, well, you know, there was no chair here. Yeah, but we've been sitting here for. Yeah, yeah. In, 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 a, in a way, because we know jail, he's right. got a point. Yes. You know. But it's too late because yeah, I'm and now I'm here. So, right. so yeah, next week beat me. Yeah, right, right. So, exactly. You know, he doesn't think. Maybe he's not thinking like that. He's trying to think like that. We're okay with each other. Okay. Yeah. No. So now I'm not moving. I go well. I don't know what you do every week, but I'm here. Yeah. So oh, Jesus. now my friend comes in from the door and he's looking. He sees something's up, and he looks at me. And the guy walks out. So I know what he's doing. He's gonna go put on his boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I walk over to my friend and he goes, "You know they watch basketball every day in front there." I go, "It's too fucking late now." Yeah. Now, you, now, now it doesn't matter. I, it don't matter. Yeah. The sausage yeah, dinner yeah, don't fucking matter. You know, I made the move already, right. and I'm here, and right. I didn't, you know. Thinking back on it, 
you know, who knows how you handle the situation because I've been in jails my whole life too. So, you know, now you got to say to yourself, well, well, it's me. I'm not the, the other guy. I'm not this average guy sitting here. Right. And uh, so he goes and puts his boots on and six guys are, are there. And, and I think we're going to go. And then one of the guys kind of, one of his friends that was friendly with me was like, man, he tells his friend, just go sit there for today. And they're back and forth. And I end up staying. Even though I didn't want to stay anymore. Actually, I didn't want to stay. You didn't want to watch the game. No, I didn't yeah. want to watch the game. But at that point, yeah. you're not going. But I couldn't go nowhere. So my other friend says, <laughs> why did you do that? I says, actually, I didn't do it purposely. Right. It just happened. And then I just wasn't going to back down after that because it wouldn't look right. Right. Yeah. So, you know, and I didn't give a fuck about the game. I didn't give a fuck about the chair. But I, I kind of was, when you think back on it, I was wrong. Because, yeah. But I just didn't want to let people think that I'm moving for somebody. Right. But, uh, the same situation. I was in the medium and this guy sat in the other guy's spot and he waited until the guy, like, he never said nothing. He walked in, he saw it, like, other guys knew, okay, that shit, he's sitting in his spot. Yeah. He didn't say anything. He waited, like, 45 minutes. The guy finally got up, picked up his chair, and left. So, he comes up, he's like, hey, man, he's like, look, the spot you were sitting in, that's my spot. Like, I don't, he's like, yeah, well, you weren't there. He's like, I understand, but that's my spot. Like, don't sit there again, all right? All right, I, you know, I don't want any problems. Just don't sit there. Guy goes, yeah, all right, man, whatever. Next day. Yeah. Puts his chair down. Okay. Well, I thought to me, he handled it right. I, he weren't sitting there. Yeah. He didn't know any better. You tell him later. Right. Didn't tell him like yours where he said, no, no, you, he's trying to get you to like move. Right. Yeah. Like, no, no. Now you're embarrassing. Right. Me. Now, like you said, now yeah. I look like a fucking punk and I yeah. can't move. He should have just waited for you to move. Right. But then, guess what? The next day, guy sat there again. Yeah. Well, now he's, now, now he he's, looked at, now he's saying, let's go. Yeah. That's he, what he, he said. He didn't say anything. He just looked at him. He went upstairs. He got a fucking broom <laughs> for the mob. <laughs> Came back that water was whack, just right had in the back. To, of the, he dude, had to fell down. I hit the fucking get hit over him out. He had to. He yeah. had to. I mean, we all he had to do that. But we yeah. all used to chairs out I, I, in a in a spot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you really think about it when a guy comes in from a jailhouse guy, and you're not going to do that to him either because we've been down a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. Say, listen, I don't care what you did. You know, what made you deserve that spot? And it's not like the chair's already in place. The chair's yeah. Right. right. If it's frozen, we used to yeah. put our, our, our towel on there, yeah. a blanket, we put a cup for movie night. Right. You know, that's different. But when there's no chair there and you're sitting in the spot, and he goes, that's my spot. Yeah, it's just stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. yeah. It, it is. These are dumb shit things it, that happen. It's, yeah, oh, it's super, I, I had super a, stupid. I, I, yeah. so, so I was down 11 years, 11 and a half years. And I, I, I might have told you a story. I don't think you, I told you the story. So I get, I, I, I watch Friends. Like Friends comes on every day, right? It's, so, you know, and I, I listen, I look forward to watching Friends. Yeah, of course. Could you imagine I like Joey and the other gay souls on the show? It's fun. Plus Jennifer Aniston's on there, Cox and the other blonde. So it's a fun show. So they do one little thing that I always went, like that in the middle in, in the introduction to the, in the the jingle to the show right and, and I do that and I do it every time so some guy some guy I don't know Redbone they call him he, he's sitting there with the, with the big with these big cars headphones on and he goes hey I go yeah he goes can you not clap your fucking hands it, it hurts my ears I go excuse me now he already made a mistake he wasn't kind he said oh you're hurting my ears stop me I go now, I said, what do you mean? He goes, yeah. Well, you, I said, look, I said, I've been doing this for fucking three years. Now I'm getting ready to go home in three months. Yeah. He goes, I'm, I, I've been doing, I said, I've been doing this for three years. He goes, well, well, I don't like it. I said, oh, you don't like it? I go, okay, wait till next time. So I said, I'm going to tell you what. I said, how about this? You go fuck yourself and don't ever talk to me again. I said, and I'll do this every day for the next, for the rest of the time I'm here. Next day. Mike, you know, he knows me. I don't know him. Right. Red bone. Yeah. Mike, yeah. come here. I want to talk to you. I said, hi, this guy wants to fucking bring it and straighten it out, whatever. Because that's what we do in prison. Yeah. Says, come on, come on. I, 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 and I'm stupid. Because I'm straight up. Well, you said it. We didn't. Well, because I'm straight up. I'm straight up. You want right. to talk to me? Come on, let's go talk. You know, what's going to happen when we talk is up to us, right? When we, we work it out. Walk in his cell, closes the door. And a guy six foot eight stands in front of the door on the other side. <laughs> and he pulls out a knife like this fucking long. Yeah. I was telling you a little story. Ah, I, I would I'm never going home. I got nothing to go home to. He's going home in six weeks. I got nothing to go home to. Uh, you know, he's a guy from DC. DC, yeah. they, they're state, they're actually state inmates. Yeah. DC, yeah, yeah. DC prisoners, people don't know for the well, federal, yeah, the federal system. Down, yeah. yeah. So he's a, he's a state inmate. And, and I, I, Redbone, and I ain't going home. And I, 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 and I went, 
I looked at him and I tell this story. It's fucking, it's intense when I really get into it. And I looked at him and I said, boy, that knife's going to kill this motherfucker. His own knife. He's going to die from his own fucking knife. That's how I fucking dealt with it. Of course, I said, dear God, forgive me because I'm going to kill him and I'm going home in three months. Well, you know, number one, not if you kill him. That don't know. Well, for people that don't know that are listening to this. No, Three months away from going home. No one is supposed to ever tell somebody when you're going home because this is what goes on. So if they think you're short, they fuck. They start trying when yeah, you're trying. trying you. They know that you, yeah. you don't want nothing anymore because you got your hands tied. You're going home. So right. you shouldn't tell anybody. Right, when you're right. Going yeah, home. and I, I don't know that he knew right. that, but but yeah. I, I was well known in prison. Yeah, you know, little, listen. Well, I did the book. I did a book. It's like a handbook. Prison rules. Things to do and don't do. So, and, and one of the other things you guys know. Oh, you did a book? Yeah. How many books? Five books. Uh, Are you some writer? You're some fucking writer. He doesn't speak English. Books. He doesn't speak English well, but he can write. I'm listening to you. <laughs> go ahead. Well, last in Mafia International. There you go. But we, we, you know, because of all these stupid little things in jail, we had this other thing. When you go to chow uh, for lunch, guys would put their towels or tell a guy, hey, Put my towel on the bench. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put my towel. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you know, guys, nobody's touching the bench. <laughs> yeah, because they're afraid that you know they don't want the confrontation, guys. Yeah. So one of my friends used to put the towel on the bench, and I used to tell my friends that we, you know, Lee, these are some Lee, 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 Lee Whitney, Lee Whitney, yeah, yeah. Guy, yeah. Got yeah. caught with thirty-seven tons a week. Yeah, a great guy. Yeah. Anyway, very nice guy. We're always Took my playing, back even. We're always playing jokes, so we kept taking his towel, and we were moving it. And somebody would ask us, is anybody on the bench? No, nah, I use it. You know, you know these guys are asking them. Right. Right? They don't want to have an issue. And my friend's going crazy. Who's touching my fucking towel? Oh, it was your own friend. Yours yeah, your own friend. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, I don't know. So you go over to the guy on the bench. He goes, did you touch my towel? Because he's benching on Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He goes, bench. I didn't touch your towel. <laughs> so he don't want to give us up. Yeah. So I'm using the bench. Yeah, yeah. No, he does it again, he does it again. Finally, he comes over there and we put little snacks on, on the bench and he says, uh-uh. fucking <laughs> he goes, what the fuck is wrong with you? You're going to get me in a fight. Yeah. Says, we ain't going to get in a fight. Yeah. But the thing is really crazy and everybody does that. These little games in jail is really ridiculous. Like, who the fuck makes these rules that you put your you down? Yeah, it's yours. It's yours. It's yours. And it's yours and you're not touching it. Yeah, they would do that in the the, the showers. Like yeah, you got a fucking yeah. thing. That means I'm, like, I'm taking a shower. For, like, there's a line, yeah. and there's a fucking towel that's been there yeah. for ten minutes. Yeah. Actually, in Hillsborough, a guy did do that to me on the second floor, and I was steaming. I had my towel up there, and he just went in. Right, and then he told another guy, "Fuck him," you know. <laughs> Yeah. You know, I'm already got my hands full with Trump. I'm yeah. all kinds of life sentences. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm fucking fuming. I talk to my friend. How many life sentences did you face? Oh, a lot. 20 what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so I said, Matt, yeah. that's up to you on stand, his side. Stand by the door. I just stand by the door. I said, I can't let this go. And I went in. And you know, when, you remember Hills when they locked the doors automatically locked. Yeah. So I went in and, and uh, you know, I hit the guy. And but whatever, and you know what he did? He hit the button, and uh, it came up, and you know I got locked down, and whatever. But you know th- th- these are stupid things. Even I was thinking about like afterwards. Imagine what would I care that he went in the shower? Yeah, now it seems but stupid. It's, it's important well, then, it's important though, because right? It's just hard to explain. You, right? Yeah, and it's hard to explain to people outside on the street. Like, what's the big deal that he did that? Right. You know, because that's the first thing, and then you know, I'm like, and it was a young punky kid. He wasn't a tough guy. You say the fucking button thing. Like I remember I had a fucking celly one time. He comes in. We were cellies. Like we ended up being cellies. And he was a fucking Mexican uh, gang member. He's like, listen, Cox. He said, you know, you, you know, you know, uh, I do this and I do that. But look, you know, sometimes I'm, if I have problems with somebody, I'm like, you gotta, I gotta know if they come in here, I gotta be able to count on you. And I looked at him. I said, I'm gonna tell you something. If they come in here hard and he goes, yeah, I said, I'm going to hit the button on my way out the fucking door. I said, I'm letting you not right, no, right now. I said, I'm going to go to the guard. Yeah. I said, well, you cannot count on me. Do you understand? I will hit the button. I will get the guard. But I'm not fucking doing nothing for you, though. I'm not fighting nobody. I got no fucking knife, and I'm not interested yeah. in being involved. Yeah. And he yeah. goes, he was like, fucking white boy, motherfucker. I said, I'm just letting you know. You move in here. That's what it is. That's how it is. And he was like... <laughs> Well, I guess I better not have any trouble. I said, I mean, there you, you go. Exactly. That's <laughs> where we're at. smart man. <laughs> That's where we're at. I had a guy in Honduras with me, Jose Montoya. We were good friends. And he got it like 30 years. He used to play football, soccer. And, you know, a guy moves down two cells down from us, from Salvador. 
short, fat kid, nice kid, tatted up. And, you know, I'm talking to him. And one of the guys on the cell block was talking in front of his cell in the morning. He just got there. And he says to him, just kind of what you said earlier. He said it in a nice way. He says, listen, please, in the morning. You know, he had a strong accent, the guy. He says, in the morning, can you talk somewhere else? Because he's out front of his door. Oh, uh, right. so yeah, yeah, he, yeah. He says, yeah, okay, no problem. He does it again. Now the guy is talking to me. And I told Jose, you know, I didn't call him Jose, I called Montoya. I said to Montoya, this guy's serious. He said, you think? Now Montoya's a serious guy. And I said, yeah, 100%. So the guy goes in his cell, I forget his name, and he's packing his stuff. And he says, John, it was nice meeting you. This <laughs> I knew it, you know? He's going to the hall. He gets a razor. He's going to the hall. And he raises the fuck out of him. And I told him, I told Montoya, I told you he's going to do something. I said, you could tell he was going to do yeah, something. He's, yeah. he's a real guy. Yeah. You're no bullshit, very quiet. He wasn't like a big mouth. And, you know, when he came over, he said, hey, it was nice meeting you, brother. You know, uh, so this guy's uh, going. Oh, uh, shit. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Because he wouldn't shut up. He was disrespecting him, he was trying to sleep or something, right? He was trying to sleep. He's sleeping. He's right. right. It's early in the morning. Right. What are you doing? Yeah. You're going to drink the coffee in front yeah. of the cell. Yeah. So, uh, John, real quick, like I know bits and pieces of your story, but I mean, if you had to summarize it in 10 or 15 minutes, you know, what's what's the basic Wait, wait, wait. He doesn't get story. 10, 15 minutes right here. You no got like an hour way. and a half. No fucking way. Think we, you go got on, we go, we do one on one on our own. Right now, you tell, give him a little synopsis. This guy's crazy. He did. 10, 15 How long minutes. did he do when, when I interviewed him? He got, <laughs> he got, I'm going to, yeah, let's check. No let's fucking way. Dow. Uh, what's the matter? Uh, Pinky. Uh, yeah. Pinky. Yeah. Pinky Duskadori. Yeah, I just yeah. hit it. It, you got an hour and 54 minutes is what yours was. An hour and 50. An, was it an hour and 54 minutes? 154, yeah. Uh, My God, I mean, I can bro. leave. You got to want to do a, so, a one-on-one. Go, go ahead, Johnny. So, Matt, I'll give you a, a quick overview of my life. So, the people that think, most people think that are listening to my story, my background, that it started with the Gottis. That's not really the truth. It kind of was the middle of my life. The beginning of my life is my father was involved with gangsters. He lived in you know, Low East Side, Manhattan, Seward Street, uh, Rivington. And his neighbors were guys like Vito Genovese. His friends was uh, Charlie Luciano, Lucky Luciano, his first cousin. Blackie was also a made guy, became my father's partner, my uncle's partner in nightclubs and card games and things like that. So I was raised around these guys. Little Al Greco, who's a, a big name in North Jersey, uh, killer in jail, got life. These were my father's friends. So I was introduced to them as a young kid. Then later on, my baseball coach was Fat Andy Ruggiano's son, who I still talk to, Anthony Ruggiano, he does shows with me, his brother Albert. And their father was the boss of uh, our neighborhood of the Gambino family. So I was raised around gangsters. Right. Then uh, my little girlfriend at the times, uh, uncle and father, wise guys with the Lucchese family. Those are my other friends. Later on, the Burke family, uh, Frankie Burke from the famous movie Goodfellas was one of my best friends. And later on, he gets killed. And I'm actually one of the guys that come to the house and tell this, not one of, I am the guy that comes to the house to bring the sister to Kings County Hospital in Brooklyn so we can identify the body that it's her brother after he got shot in the head five times by a, another mutual friend of ours, Tito, who later on, he gets shot in the head 10 times in uh, retribution for killing Frank. This is our nation. So this is like a mortgage broker. Yeah. Right. So like, it's, a lot like, it's a lot like the mortgage. Like the it's a lot like being a mortgage broker, so, right? Yeah. When yeah. people ask me, where are you going? Bye-bye. I, I can't see me. Oh, my God. Are you serious? I think they can see you. It <laughs> was blocking my fucking beautiful face. Here's the problem. He's cutting into my ten minutes. I, I, I was gonna say. No, you got it. I'll shut so, up. Why you ten? No. How does this pink? Is this this is pink look I, good? I really like Come on, really. We needed we needed to put a hanky. Right. Oh, I gotta get a hanky. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's so you fine. killed anyway. You, listen, mortgage brokers and killers. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, <laughs> That's a good title. I grew up in a in a very violent world, whether I liked it or not, around serious gangsters, top right. gangsters in the world. Later on, I end up with the Gaudis. So getting there is my preparation. Like people go to grammar school, to, to junior high school, to high school. I'm raised in this life and I'm around blood violence, the, the gyms boxing with the Ruggianos also, their father and my father's friends. So when people are 
surprised to hear that I was, how did it get so close to an Albanian immigrant family, an immigrant family uh, from Albania? Did I get so close to the mob and the Gotti family? It's not really because I was around other crews earlier in life that were the huge in, in the mob world. So, you know, when you get into this world, you have to either know somebody or be trusted after a while. But I was raised around this since I'm a kid, like I said. So it, it, it brought me right into the violence. I made a lot of money in the drug business and in the violent world. I became a very aggressive guy. And uh, people, you know, when I try to talk about it, I talk about it because I want to show the downslide and downfall of this life, not the the, the aggressive part. The $35 million Forbes magazine articles, all that shit. Yeah. It's not about that. No. It was at the time. I mean, listen, you, you, you know, as a young guy, and I'm pulling in my driveway at seven blocks long, you know, you got a boxing <laughs> ring outside, a baseball cages, three homes, a lake, built-in pool. Yeah. I don't realize as a young guy, hey, I bought this property at about 23, 24 years old. I bought 16 properties or whatever. I bought 12 properties to be exact, I think. But in conjunction over the years, probably 16 to 20 properties. And you just don't realize the level that you, you want more. Because yeah. it's not about just the money. It's about the power. It's about the style of living you have. It's about the, the success that you see in your mind coming from nothing, that you want more and more and more. And and what I try to do in our show is, in you know, we had at one time it was called Mafia Truth, and then we changed it to the Elite Show, is to show people that your situation or Mike's situation, my situation, you may be up here, but don't worry, you're going to come down that slide. Because there's no way you're staying up here if you're on the street. You're going to hit that. You're going to hit bottom. And, and, and what's it like to fill out an application today? How, what, what do you put on the application today? Well, when I first came home, and you know this, people ask me, <laughs> fill out an application. Yes. Yeah. And See. you know, my parole and everybody's asking me, I go, yeah, I did. And I says, but here's the problem. Uh, they write, have you ever been convicted of a misdemeanor? Yes. Have you been, ever been convicted of a felony? Yes. Have, do you have a driver's license? No. Uh, what was your felony charge? Several murders. Yeah. I mean, who's hiring you? Do you yeah. have trouble with authority? Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, so you're not getting a job unless you're going to. And this is one of the things I talk about. Second chance programs for inmates. Uh, ability once you go to jail to come out and get any job, whatever that job may be. If you can qualify for that job, they should be able to give a job so you have a check, chance at life again. If you don't give us and other people like us a chance then you're asking them to go back into that revolving door because you're not giving them that shot. And then, you know, kids from my neighborhood, we grew up on Jamaica Avenue, East New York, South Jamaica. We all grew up a certain way. And I understand that it's a tougher life for us than some other people, but that doesn't mean that you got to go into life of crime. We were just guys trying to take the shortcut. And, you know, the problem is you look at our government, the way it's situated, then I, you know, and I speak about this on a show. Right, right. I don't like what, the, you know, listen, look what's going on in Ukraine and Russia now, oh. right? Who knows what's true because we know we can't trust our media. We know what they've been telling us for two years during the pandemic. We know what they're telling us during BLM. Don't believe your lying eyes that you see. What, the burning you know, buildings? Burning buildings. Uh, please a be in a peaceful, peaceful riot? Yeah. <laughs> it's so, a peaceful riot. It's a peaceful riot. Demonstration. Yeah. <laughs> it's a joke. So when we see that the manipulation just of that, then I'm not sure that anybody's ever going to believe the media what's going on in Ukraine and, and Russia. you got to question everything that's being said now because we've seen so much lying going on to us that they, this government has allowed this to happen where now we are no different than a third world country of bullshit media. We're no different. We're not getting the real story. We don't know really. And I've seen some UFC fighters actually talk about this. We don't know what went on. We do know one thing. Biden was over in Ukraine uh, before he was elected president, was pocketing all kinds of money. And it was a situation all of a sudden now we're in the middle of getting ourselves involved in a war. And as bad as I feel for the people and the kids, because you feel terrible for them, it's the governments we don't trust because we don't know what's really going on. And in like that, and I'm going to make a correlation with the mob world. It's the same thing. It's all smoke and mirrors and bullshit. And when you buy into it, you're really a sucker. The other day, the other day, Matt, hey, John and I had a conversation. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was. Yeah. I'm not saying anything. Okay. I, I thought you had a question there. No. The other day, John and I were driving in the car, and John says to me, "If I put that much energy and effort that I put into this whole lifestyle into a regular job or business, how much?" 
where would we be today? In other words, so because we're looking at million dollar homes and, and the things that you know, like you were in construction. You did, I don't know if you did any flipping, but you did mortgaging and all that stuff. If if we just put that kind of energy and effort into the we call it easy money, but by the way. There is no easy money. The dope money, all that money, nothing's easy because there's a cost to all of it. The, the free money you got, there was a cost to all of it. At the time, it seems easy and free, but the cost is, is oh, listen, we're paying the rest of our lives for it, including yeah. yourself. Yeah. We'll, we'll pay I, worked for, very, I worked very hard at fraud. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it was a lot I mean, of work. But if yeah. you pull it out legit, if you bought a house, flipped it, bought another one, flipped but, it. But you were very successful. For, in, in the fraud business until you went to jail. Yeah. Right. You got caught. Yeah. Right. But the thing is, the way we helping each other now, doing this, we could have helped each other back then the right way. Yeah. Right. And became very successful. If three guys were half the brains that we right have. Guys. Like, yeah. you know, I helped guys like, you know, I used Duke Mandel and Timmy Donovan early. These guys I helped, I gave them all kinds of money. I started them out in businesses and they fucked me. Yeah. And, you know, this is, you know, this also is the problem. You have guys that are just not nice guys. It doesn't matter what I did for a living. I wasn't a beat artist. These guys are beat artists. I would help them along. You would think they'd be dedicated for me to the rest of their lives. Instead, they're trying to dig in your pocket when you're sleeping. So <laughs> people get entitled. They start thinking, you know, you you give them you give them a couple hundred thousand dollars, and then and they start to think that that they earned it. It's yeah, like, yeah. Well, they forget. Earn it. I tell you a good story. I gave it to you. Yeah. Timmy Donovan's father, when he was alive, had an argument with me because I gave his son couple hundred thousand to buy a building. I gave him money for the parking business. And his father's arguing with me. And I said to him, you know what's funny about you? I says, you're a nice guy, but you're full of shit. You wouldn't give your own son a dollar because you didn't trust him. But it's okay for him to take my money, go ride around on motorcycles inside my inside my building, sell weed, bookmake, and do anything else to fuck me out of my money without my permission. I said, play around like it was a couple of bucks. But why didn't you give him money? If you if you had such a good faith in your son, you never trusted your own son. So you're talking you're talking bullshit. Just be a real guy and say the way it is. But the problem is guys don't want to be honest with themselves because you know being honest with themselves, they got to be truthful about their kid, what they raised. How many murders did you plead guilty to? Uh, I think I pled to six murders, uh, conspiracies, four and two, and uh, about forty shootings. Yeah, that's an. <laughs> Well, I mean, sure. I, I, I don't know. No, no. The reason is threw that in there. Yeah, I don't know why I threw it in he's, there. He's, uh, no, no, everybody's <laughs> always curious to ask me that question. Yeah, and I, I mean, never, really, I actually never asked him that question until just now. By oh, the yeah? way, that's the first time I ever asked him that question. And, yeah. and, I, and I gotta say though, when people ask me that question, whether it's you or somebody else, I try to be to show kids this life is bullshit by me saying, "Don't believe the rest of these guys. They didn't do this. They didn't do the work." Because you could put anybody on here and you got to sit with them and be very specific. I'm always asking everybody to do. And people always try to dance around it. Well, ask a guy, can you tell me the first time you did this kind of shooting? Uh, what were you thinking? What kind of guns you use? Where did it happen? Where, and go to the second shooting, go to third. I'm going to tell you why. Most of them are going to stop at one or maybe two. All right. And I blast Sammy Gravano for that all the time because he tells everybody he's a perfect killer on his shows. He had a lot to say about me, but I've confronted him a hundred times. He only shot a gun once. The second one, I don't count because the second time was a 15 or 16 year old boy. So that's his claim to fame being a tough guy. They're full of shit. And if you weren't full of shit, you'd see there and list it when you're doing your, your podcast and you'd say, I did this, I did that, I did this. Instead, he tells you he's good at murder when he really didn't. He, he didn't do anything. No, he, 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 he was known as Sammy the Bullshit Artist, actually, growing up. That was his nickname. So, you know, nobody says that. They talk about the, right. you know, the title they gave him. So, you know, I always say the same thing. I can make a title for you today. You are now the new concierge of podcasting. You're my own divorce. And, you know, we could be full of shit like everybody else. Yeah. You know, because it's just a bullshit. And, and I, that's why I try to. Positive message to kids. Don't buy it. Buy any of this bullshit. Get a job. Do the right <laughs> Get a job. With we a pen. decided the other day, you could go to UPS, start off driving a truck or loading trucks or whatever. And if you stay with them 10 years, watch how successful you get in stock options and everything. You don't Listen, need to do I, I say FedEx. All, I use FedEx. I, I use yeah. the exact thing, same thing all the time. Only yeah. I say FedEx. Yeah. Yeah. My, my, yeah. You're my right, family though. member, I won't say who he is, was on the street with me in trouble. Uh, face murder charges, beat him, and he changes, turns his life around, and he works for a major corporation, right, from nowhere, and he makes almost a half a million a year. So it can be done. Yeah. You know, if, if, if that's really, you know, the mindset is, 
I didn't know any better, I guess. I was raised in this life since I'm a kid. Uh, I had some chances. And, you know, well, you had a baseball scholarship. Well, I, and then I had an arm injury. So I had some chances. And, I, and when, I, when they fell, University of Tampa, when they fell, uh, when they fell out, I used that as an excuse to continue on the street. You know, I didn't, it still didn't have to go on the street. I could have did something else, right? I could have got a job somewhere else. I didn't do that. So what I try to tell kids is be true to yourself, right? Well, not just kids, men, anybody, woman. Be true to yourself. Don't don't give up on yourself like that because you're just going to struggle the rest of your life. And it's going to bring you up. Look how much heartache we had. You know, we're talking about all the, the thing, but how much heartache did you sit with your hands in your, your your face crying? How many times you were depressed sitting in jail cells and, you know, everybody left you. You told a story earlier about your girl. Depressed. Her. I was kissing the fucking cinder blocks. I woke up kissing that cinder blocks. got to come across, yeah. You know? I was kissing cinder blocks, like deep throat and everything, yeah. you know, in, in in the joint. Yeah, I woke up, you wake up mad. Like, I thought there was someone there with me. I was kissing cinder block walls. That's not, that's not a joke. That's real. I fucking was well, when kissing. When I talk about the violence, too, you got to remember, so when I'm talking about the violence... <laughs> It's like I'm talking about somebody else. It was a different lifetime. Matt, Matt's yeah. like, what the fuck is he saying? Yeah, he. I, you didn't kiss no cinder blocks. I mean, you didn't yeah, kiss out of blocks? all out of all the talent out there. This is what you <laughs> you ran with this guy. You were kissing. The, did you ever kiss a cinder block? No. Come on. No. Come on. No. None of those dreams. Hey, no. Matt, Come on. Matt, everybody calls me and says they, they love him or they call me and they tell me, I, "What you know, are you guys doing?" Listen, I thought when we did our interview, when you left. Yeah, I thought worst fucking interview I've ever done. It was horrible. Yeah, it it I I, I totally when you left I was like holy shit I never never asked him about this never asked him about that and I was like <laughs> fuck and I was like oh this is this is horrible yeah and then that video just kept going and going and sh and and the in the comment section they either they it was only two comments on him. I could listen to this dude forever. He's amazing. He's a, or bro, I I couldn't. I just couldn't watch, bro. I can't I stand stay, that guy. I could just I stay in that. the room with this. Yeah, exactly. Like how could <laughs> yeah. you? Oh, oh, it was just one. It was one or the other. But I, I was thinking that what you just said about the so back to, you know. Yeah. So kiss him listen, 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 I, I'm always I'm always asked like if you could do it. Not always, but you know, could you do it over again? You know, or do you regret? I always love the, yeah. do you regret anything? Do I regret anything? Do I regret getting out of fucking prison at, at you know, losing 13 years? Yeah. No, it was fun. Doing, yeah, yeah. Oh, fun. I loved it. I loved um, it. Getting out at 50 with nothing. Yeah. Everybody's given up on you. Oh, yeah. And rightfully so. so. You're a scumbag. Right. Like, I'm doing scumbag fucking things. Right. You know, like, when, in the first couple of years I was locked up. I, I was hated everybody. Everybody fucking piece of shit. This guy, I gave Ugh. that guy money. I did this. Right. I don't want to turn my calls. Yeah. This guy, you know, everybody it was it was everybody else's fault. Right. And then eventually you get to that point where you start to realize, no, nah, if you're lucky, because I know guys that did 20 years and still hate everybody. Yeah. And, and they went out and they're bitter and they're gonna die of a heart attack. Yeah. And the truth is, by the time I, after a few years, I started realizing, no, I put me here. Yeah. And people say that now, man, I can't believe you did all that time. Can't believe that they gave you that much time. No, they didn't give me that much. I gave me that much. <laughs> yeah. I put me in jail. Well, here's the problem, Matt, right? And I'm very honest too. And people ask me questions. I understand, really do understand why I shot and stabbed and batted a lot of guys. They deserved it. I'm th this is being honest. Right. They, well, that's, you know, that's, well, I, I was going to say list, these, if you, if you've seen a list, I can write 10 names right now. Yeah, but these are other, these are other criminals. These are other guys that are, well, that no, are committed. It's not, it, it's, yeah, it, it's not that it's, they are looking for when they test the waters and they're not sure. Like there's 10 guys right now. I can write a list that I, in some ways, wish I was the guy I used to be because I'd slaughter them because I know. You mean current shit. guys? Current guys right, right. now. Oh, okay. But here's the difference. Am I on that list? Uh, no, you're, you're off the list. You were on the list the other day because why you were snoring loud. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so it, those 10 guys, are they really deserve to get what I used to do. And they know I'm not going to do it. So they got big mouths and they talk nonsense and they're not in the league with me when it comes to this. They all try to prove their egos and they're full of shit right. and whatever. And they talk and talk because it's an area you can type away and all that. But the difference is, and this is what I try to tell kids that are going through what I'm going through, or men that are going through what I'm going through, it ain't worth your own life to do that. Before, I didn't realize that. I was willing to give up my life for that. Now I say to myself, as much as I want to do it, I'm not hurting myself. 
So that's always going to be my message to everybody. And I say it all the time, you might as well look in the mirror and shoot yourself then. Because this is very easy for me to do what I used to do. I know they're full of shit because when there was no cameras out there, they weren't doing anything. Now there was technology and cameras. They're still talking when they didn't do it back then. So this is, is at the end of the day, you got to say to yourself, what's my life worth? Now my life's worth something. Back then, I didn't think it was worth anything for whatever reason. And I went through therapy. And I now my high is to help other kids not do what I used to do. Say, I get what you're doing because... You know, people say, well, how'd you change? I didn't change that much. I just don't react the same. I mean, I still have that same feeling to, to go after guys that are really fucking with me or guys that are screwing me or guys like, say, Duke or Timmy. I just brought up their names earlier. Or Mike Mallon and these guys that robbed me and beat me. Every day I, I, I think about, you know, but I won't react anymore because I know that it's just not worth my life to react to these guys and that these guys... Somewhere down the line, a pieces of shit, and they'll get what they got. And we got a show to do, you know. And I believe that, really. You know, <laughs> we I got a show to do. Pay some way, I believe, with God, with karma, whatever. And you know, and I just look at it and I go, you know what? Move forward, do the right thing, do the right thing for kids, and put them in the right thing, and put and do the right thing for myself and family. Enjoy my life. Right. So I what a good, what, what a nice guy. Say. You're so sweet. Thanks. You're so sweet. <laughs> He actually is a sweetheart and a charmer too. What? I tell you, he, he really. So, I, and so let me. Hey, he's yeah, yeah, what? Yeah, yeah. Let, Santa, it was fucking thirty let's, minutes. Let's go he's, go he's, he's, he's got thirty go minutes. Go okay, all right. So a lot. So at one point you were given guns. Uh, at what what point? What was that for? What's going on with? Uh, it had something something to do with uh, Gotti Junior. Yeah, it, what happened was uh, in the mid nineties. I want to get you in the mic. I want them to hear that because you're so far away from the fucking yeah, mic. Yeah, yeah. Motherfucker. <laughs> he, kill, he don't kill anybody no more. I so can what, say so that. It was <laughs> in the mid-90s. There was a lot of, uh, after guys were being hit back and forth over uh, Paul Castellano in the, in the mid-80s got hit. And then later on in the 90s when Senior goes to prison, Gotti Jr. takes over. And when he takes over, uh, the family is the acting boss. Uh, half of the family from the faction of the Castellanos aren't happy about Junior and leadership and Gotti Sr. calling a shot from prison. And you have guys like uh, Danny Marino. Uh, you have guys like Joe Watts. I met Danny Marino, just for the record. Yeah, yeah I did. You know, white, uh, white Mercedes Benz convertible. Jimmy, Fall uh, uh, Jimmy Brown, failure. Uh, you have these guys who are loyalists to Paul Castellano. They don't like what happened. They don't respect Junior in the position and Nicky Carrazzo and, and so forth from the Brooklyn guys that start uh, having discussions about killing Gotti Jr. and killing his uncle, uh, John Gotti Sr., his brother, Pete, and the brother-in-law, Carmine, at the time. So they discuss it. Somebody comes to see me, Charles uh, Koenig, and he says to me, uh, would you hit these guys? And I said, tell me what's going on. He says, well, uh, they want him out of the way. They want to run the family. They don't want him there. Uh, they don't want senior running the, the, you know, the, the family from prison. It's over for them. I said, all right. And he said, Did you have a choice, you think, at that moment? Yeah, I had a choice. Yeah? Yeah, yeah I had a choice. But I had my own problems with, with Gotti at the time. Not the father, but with the son. And I mean, they were talking too much, and I didn't like it. And, and you know, I went through names in the past of guys I hit around him. You know, one of them... Johnny Gabbitt, the other one, Stevie Newell, that later on, I uh, he just passed away. He became a friend of mine, believe it or not, again, and he was on my show. Uh, my own cousin, Nicky, I shot him up. Uh, Joe Kane, that was around him. We batted him. Then later on, we stabbed him up. He, he was around Gotti. And then we robbed a couple of bookmakers around him. Uh, we took one of his his uncle's uh, son-in-laws, and we we beat him real bad on the side of Bell Park. We left him for dead. So we started attacking all their guys. And they never retributed back. And so I guess they came to me to step it up to the next thing and hit these guys. They, brought, they gave me a, a machine gun. They gave me a nine millimeter. I took those guns and I put them in a tattoo shop in Ozone Park that everybody knew of. I was a friend of ours. And we grew up with him on Jamaica. He was a childhood friend. And we put the guns in there in Kubo shop. Now, he knew the guns were there. Obviously, they're in his safe. But he didn't know who the hit was on for. And it was supposed to be for them. And during the negotiations, we're trying to set up where we're going to hit him. We're going to hit him in a restaurant that we're going to. And I was going to come in through the back kitchen. And I had two shooters that were going to come in from the front. 
and to make sure nobody could run out and I was going to do the shooting uh, when we have a driver. At, at this point, after we're talking about how we're going to set up, how we're going to do that, who's going to come, they call off the hit and they ask for the guns back. Because what I was told, senior guys. That's never a good thing. Huh? Well, they agreed, to, they, they agreed to step it over and they had a panel of guys who would run a family. And they agreed to let uh, certain guys like Nikki Krause step in on that panel and collect the, the money and see as, as as really the face of the Gambino family. He's a legitimate gangster and tough guy. And he's been around for, for forever. Um, when they asked for the guns back, I refused to give them back. Because I know the situation I'm in now, that both sides, and then I'll be the guy in the middle. So I wouldn't give the guns back. And I told my guys, nobody gives this gun back until I was going to prison. I had several cases at the time. And so the panic that I won't give the guns back, un unbeknownst to me at that time, they told me they actually got the guns from Gotti Jr. himself, not knowing that the, these, the shooting was going to be on him. And we would have kept so, so how did that work? Excuse, they kept asking for the guns back. Junior was asking, where's my, where's my guns? And I'm not giving them back. And that's why they're asking me to give them back. And I told Charles, nobody's getting those guns. I said, nobody's getting anything. So so Junior, so how? Yeah, he, yeah, he gave, Junior gave them the guns to have himself whacked with. Right. And it comes all out during the trials. So when people ask me, you know, the betrayal of the mafia. And you know, the funny thing is, these guys talk about killing me a hundred times too. So, you know, our plot actually went a little further. But when people talk about friendships in this life, there is no. Now, you guys were technically best of friends, technically. You and Junior. I mean, we were good friends. I mean. You slept at his house. Yeah, I was slept at his house. I was in his wedding, uh, at his wedding. It was uh, only a couple hundred people at the Helmsley Palace. He was the best man of mine, his signature. Uh, I was in his sister's wedding party. So, you know, uh, so, yeah, we were close. When people say, well, I, I don't know how many more videos and photos and family gatherings we need, so, you know, so. <laughs> Go kill your best man. Well, <laughs> I'm not laughing. It's not funny, but it, that's funny. <laughs> well, in that life, there is no best friends. Right. You know, anybody who believes anything, just look at it. Don't take my word for it. Look at history of everybody hitting each other. Yeah. Yeah. You know, everybody's hitting each other all over the place. Best friends, bosses, underbosses. This is the life. It's nothing but treachery. There is no friend. And who can hurt you the most? It's about who. Yeah, who can, can get you close to you? And, close uh, to you. Yeah, yeah. And who's got the most money? How do you get it? How do you take the power? How do you take the? How do you take the platform? And that's what that life's about. Anybody tells you anything different, they're so full of shit. And the people that comment that don't know, they're so naive to understand the level that we play at. Even to today, when I'm out of that life, they're still bent on coming after me because they have to. Retract from the truth. They somehow, yeah. And you know, there's so much more in that life that I could sit here for a year straight and talk about this stuff and the things we're on. But the thing that happens is guys come out of the woodwork, uh, like Lee did, that was in prison with me, right? In McCain. Right. So there's a million guys that grew up with us that know the factual stuff of what went on in this life. And you know, and Gotti's lawyer, the father's lawyer, Richie Raybach, was my attorney up to about 2000. So. Or, or anyway, until I went to prison in the 90s, the, you know, the middle, late 90s. So, you know, these are the ties we all have to each other because of we want to keep a thumb on each other to know what everybody's doing so they're not cooperating or whatever else is going on. Right. Yeah. So I have a question. So, like, basically, like, there's like a, a, a hit on you, right? Like, there's guys out there that want to have you murdered. Do you, are you, am I wrong about that? Right now? In general, <laughs> I mean, haven't there Listen, been? When we lived that life, you know, I've been stabbed up. I've been shot. I've been batted. I've been hit by cars. I've been everything. You know, guys tried to kill me, I don't know how many times, 10 times, 12 times. There were setups. Guys that used to be my enemies, very serious guys. I, I mentioned them a lot. You know, we circled the block a few times before we came. <laughs> we circled the <laughs> block a few times before we came right. in. They, yeah. they had uh, different schemes to try to hit me, and we discuss it now. We laugh about it because we're out of that life. So that's just part of it. We were raised like this. Every day is part of that. You know, it's nothing special that they're trying to hit you today, as crazy as that sounds. That's like saying to somebody that goes and serves a tour in Iraq or Afghanistan, uh, do you think about it? I mean, it's part of their everyday life. They put the uniform on, it's part of it. Police officer puts his uniform on, it's part of it. That's why I'm always talking about pro-America, pro-police, pro-USA, because they're risking themselves every day they're out there in a good way. We risk ourselves every day. 
whether or not, because when you're doing what I do and you hurt as many people and shoot people and kill people, you're always going to be a target, right? And that's just the way it is. But this ain't the 80s and 90s when there's uh, consequences to your actions. Before, guys will be dropped constantly. Now you don't see guys getting dropped. I mean, guys could get killed still, but it's not nowhere near is dangerous. Unless you're in Chicago yeah. right now. New York is turning back into the, the old the old West again with the not gangsters. Uh, no, no. The street yeah, yeah. kids pushing people into subways, robbing them, shooting them up. I mean, it's it's getting stupid out there again. But, it's, yeah, it's a different world. It's a different world. Yeah. I, yeah. I talk about that. The street kids from my neighborhood, yeah. the gangsters are tough kids. Yeah. And I just hope I reach some of them so they don't follow that street shit. Because All it's getting right. them nowhere. Thanks, thanks, Matt, right. for having us in your studio on the John A. Light Show. It's been really, uh, it's really been an excellent time. John, uh, what do you think? <laughs> well, I think I already know Matt. He's a gentleman. <laughs> I enjoy being in his company. So uh, this is not the first time we've been together. I was, you know that. Yeah. yeah. We're friends, right. and, and I love uh, being on with Well, you. thanks for having us in your studio on the John A. Light Show. No problem. So yeah, anybody that's looking in and, and enjoyed the interview with Matt Cox, Look for him on uh, his, his channel, YouTube, Matthew Cox. And if uh, you need any information, you know, you can always reach out to us on the True John Elite Instagram, my uh, website, johnelite.com. We have books. We have my baseball bats out that I sign. And anything that you need, schedules of my shows that are coming out, movies, uh, TV programs, they'll all be on my website. So, again, if you're looking for Matthew Cox on his channel, uh, you can find them on YouTube or ask me directly on emails or uh, write my uh, website. Thank you. New York City.